If you guys lived in a Divergent type world, which faction would you choose? I think I'd be Divergent, but I would choose probably, probably Dauntless because they have the most fun, really. But uh, this is an interesting, interesting question because I think the whole concept is that you know you begin a in a world in a society where people are these they've chosen they've come to a point where they've had to do something very different, um, which seems alien to us. Obviously, choosing being one thing, um, but you know you start in a world which is real and you believe in, and then it starts to kind of crumble around you, and you and, and then the characters start to question: Can you be one thing? And ultimately, the answer is probably no. You know, which is human nature, but it's an interesting journey in how they kind of discover that, and that also reflects their own journeys as characters and becoming, becoming people and adults and, and the people they want to be. How about you? I would be divergent as well. Um, just sort of agreeing with everything that he said, but if I had to choose one, I don't think I could choose between Amity and Dauntless. They're both so me. So now, how is it being in? what's being called the next Hunger Games and, you know, the next big YA property. I imagine it might be inspiring, but nerve-wracking at the same time. Yeah, I mean, we, 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 we've talked about that before, and I think, in a way, you know, on one hand, really... You can't think about it. You create expectations and you think about it and you just feel like... It's all... I mean, sorry, I'm totally kidding. No, you're right. You're but it's like, you think about something like that and it... It doesn't make any sense, you know, this world that we live in and this industry that we are a part of just doesn't make any sense. And to create expectations for your life or to think about something that hasn't happened yet seems... Yeah, I think that's true. Nothing is something until it's something. And and also kind of buy, I know this sounds, but kind of if you, if you, if you believe or buy into into hype too much then I think that's dangerous in, is any, you know, in anything that you do whether it's you know hype if you're a lawyer and people are saying X or Y you know so trying to just take it for what it is and do the best you can in the moment of filming it and then obviously you do your press to help the movie out but then this is a certain extent where you just need to kind of wash your hands of it and not, not even wash your hands of it but just break free from it and then it, the, you can wash your hands from it the, the product will become, has, go, goes on its own journey, not the product, the movie goes on its own journey, which you have no control over, if, if that makes sense. Having read the book, I know it's so different, but do you ever feel the need to kind of like broadcast that this is not, we can't keep grouping them all together? Yeah, but I, I suppose, yeah, definitely, but naturally people like to make comparisons because it's easy, because people kind of somehow empathize with it or, or can re relate to it, you know, a, a movie comes out and they say, oh, it's the next... Indiana Jones if it's about, you know, somehow in that genre. But I, I think what was interesting for us is that we saw, because when you're doing it, you obviously have control over your character and, and, and exactly what you're doing and what you're saying and, and, and those elements. But inevitably, the bigger picture, you kind of forget. But then we saw the trailer, which is going to be shown today. And it, it was really it was really gratifying to see because it is, it is a whole different world and it looks very different. And it has a very specific feel and a very specific kind of... Um, you know, look to it in, in the sense that it's quite different. And I know everyone says, you know, oh, obviously this is different, but I think it will be evident when people see footage, if that makes sense. I'm kind of confident in that. And now, there's a lot of really big things going on here. There's, it's a big world, big sets, big action, all that. But is there any really fine detail that you two are particularly proud of that you just want people to recognize and see in the movie? Sure. I think, for example, when you look at the sets, we, we, we're in the, what I like about it is there's this mix of, because it's a semi-utopia, dystopia world, it's like, you, we're not in flashy glass buildings all the time, there's this mix of old warehouses and, and grime, and, and we were literally grit. in grit and grime. Like, it was disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> and then these flashes of, of, of kind of futuristic technology, but not in a way that seems uh, redundant or forced because they're saying this is sci-fi. So the, the kind of realness and the, and the grittiness, and also actually one thing I think always look cool when I look at the shot is that there is definitely a kind of a war vibe, like a Zero Dark Thirty vibe. They have these kind of steady cam. I know that sounds like, you know, I'm, I'm talking about a YA franchise, but you'll see it and just in terms of the way it's shot and the movement, it's quite interesting. And I think if you see it, you'll know what I mean. And how about any like little pieces or moments? Like, was there any instance where you had a really tough time? I don't know, selling a line or an emotion or anything that yes. you're like, I I got this now, and I can't wait to show you. There were a few tough times. I mean, for me, I've never done an action movie before, and I 
have always sort of, I guess, focused on humanity of films and bringing truth to a movie. And so to do a big action film was tricky, and it took me a while to sort of get the swing of it. I don't know if I ever fully did. And there were a few lines that everybody was like, well, you got to, you know, you, you have to say this because it, it's, an, it's an action movie, and this line makes sense in this, in this sort of situation. And to me, I was like, but this line would never happen in real life. We can't say this. And it was, it took me a while to sort of understand and grasp the fact that this movie is bigger than a small independent film. And so I was constantly sort of having that inner struggle of trying to justify a line when there really mm -hmm. didn't need any justification. Because a lot of the times, you know, in big action movies, things are said and it doesn't seem obscene and doesn't seem too large. When you're saying them, it seems totally out of control and, and, and not needed. But when you see it on a screen, it is justified simply by the nature of the project. And what the scene is, yeah. And I, but, but to be honest, to your testament, I think the very fact that you're questioning it makes it, will, you know, for various reasons, but that is one of many reasons we should make this a stronger, uh, you know, heroine, because Shay was always doing that. She's questioning the humanity of it, what the, the realism, what, what makes sense emotionally. And I think if you are asking those questions within the confines of an action movie, then you're going to make something much better.